If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Hello and welcome to Spirit Guides Thursday Thoughts. This is the place where you will get to hear snippets of conversations I've had with people over the years and get a variety of thoughts for you to consider for today. Enjoy! What's a couple examples of types of magic that people would use that would put them into a tradition classification? Well, there's there's high and low magic. Yeah. Yes. So high magic is... High ceremonial magic, most often. So it's, you know, the people like the hermetics do high ceremonial magic. Ceremonial magicians, go figure, do ceremonial <laughs> magic. You, you'll often find it also in Gardnerian and Alexandrian Wiccan traditions. They, they tend to do more high magic. Mm-hmm. And that just means that there is a lot of pomp and circumstance involved. Okay. Not, not to put it down because mm-hmm. I'm not intending that. There's, there's a huge amount of garb and items and accoutrement and there is a memorization of lines and there is a strong desire to repeat things that have been done before the purpose of high ceremonial magic is is two part one is to really immerse yourself in the experience through the entire creation of the environment and to use as much sympathetic magic as humanly possible, right? Well, and we've talked before about the morphic field that often comes around these things, and ritual would would effectively put you into that space as well, right? If you, yes. If you're tapping into the morphic field of... A and thing. in high ceremonial magic, you're being psychic. The second thing <laughs> that happens, uh, that they do it for, is because when you do things the exact same way every single time, you groove an energy pattern that creates its own morphic field for each of the rituals that you are then tapping into it using the sympathetic magic to amplify the working that you're doing. And so each time you do it exactly the same way, you get to do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's the upside of high ceremonial magic. The The downside is that you have to do it exactly the same way every time, regardless of who you are and what is happening in your environment at the time. And despite what your intuition may be telling you to do differently, because the pattern is the purpose. So the the medium is the message. The pattern is the purpose. Now, low magic is much more of a intuitive... A lot of fly by the seat of your pants, a lot of make it up as you go along sort of experience. And when I teach, I teach low magic. Mm-hmm. We can bring in elements of high magic. And when you're working with new people, the more trappings you use, the more they have to hook into. Mm-hmm. Because the as you work with more experienced people, you'll find that a lot of, in, in low magic, a lot of the trappings sort of fall away. Mm-hmm. And the energetic is much more of what people are going for in the low magic realm. The, the trappings are used as a bridge to get you to the energetic. It's considered that you are working to let go of the tools rather than to embrace the tools as a form and function of what you're doing. So does low magic rely more on the focused intention versus the ritual, ritualistic intention? They both rely on focused intention. In high magic, you have a script so that you can through the script, combine the energies of the people involved in the magic. Okay. In low magic, you have a broad stroke understanding of what you're doing, and each person is expected to tap into their intuition to say what's here for me to do. And so it actually requires a higher level of body awareness and self-awareness and skill from that level, and it's harder Mm-hmm. It's harder to do low magic in, for a beginner 
when you get into the upper realms and the upper levels of high magic and and low magic they're they're equivalently difficult depending upon you know what aspects you're engaging uh it's just slightly easier for a beginner to come into a high magic environment because it is scripted than it is into a low magic environment unless they are well well attuned with their own body and their own intuition and their own awareness and stuff. So I don't want to say that one is better than the other because right. it's not. They're just different. And it's about resonance. It's it's exactly. It's about resonance and, and where you feel like you fit. And some people will start in low magic and go into high magic. Other people will start in high magic and go into low magic. You know, there's, there's crossover. I had a girlfriend of mine who had been in an Alexandrian coven for years years and they used to hand her a script every time and she said you know i want to come and do ritual with you and i said great i said you can do this piece and she's like great where's my script and i said what script (laughs) she's like there's no script and i said no expecting her to panic and she went yay (laughs) and i was like okay great so clearly you are a low magician not a high magician and you have felt constrained by your high high magic environment and this will be good When you're looking into what you're choosing, don't go based on, oh, well, this one's forever old and blah, blah, blah. Because for one, most of them can't prove it. And for two, if they have to lean on that, they then you have to wonder why. And three, it's only as good as the people in front of you. So if you like and are resonating with the work of the people in front of you, work with them. If you don't like and are not resonating with the people in front of you, Nothing they say should sway you from that. (laughs) Just go with your gut because magic is very much about an energetic connection. It's all about an energetic connection. And if the energetic connection doesn't jive for you, don't let somebody talk you into it because they're, they're the oldest or they're the best or they're the whatever. You know, it's not, it doesn't matter. It's about what's the best for you. And that's it for this week's Thursday Thoughts. Join us tomorrow for the Ascend Day on the Spirit Guides podcast. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Show